Before the mid 60s, Americans had never heard the term SUV, but the Ford Motor Company changed all that. In 1966, the new Bronco was an instant hit when it first rolled off the assembly line. Now, a group of craftsmen in this small shop is looking to rekindle that 50-year-old spark. They're bringing new life to an original Bronco and giving it modern-day technology underneath. Their mission, make an American legend even better. In 1966, the Ford Bronco seemed to be the perfect vehicle. It was like a car, great for driving around town and to and from the office, and it was like a truck, capable of hauling, towing, and just about anything you could throw at it. You could also take it off-road for serious racing or just for fun. Bronco's versatility gave it widespread appeal, but its good looks sealed the deal. It all started with the revolutionary and rugged lines of the Bronco's body, and that's the core of our Bronco build. Now this time we started with a 50-year-old Bronco body from 1966, but from now on, every Bronco that leaves brand new muscle car will start with a new body like this. And whether it comes from a restoration project or if it's brand new from the ground up, every project here starts with the body men. Yes. Yes, I still got a long, long, long day. With eight years' experience working side by side, the team of Martin and Tony is a well-oiled machine. With every project, they test fit the parts and panels to see how it'll all go together and to see how much work they have ahead. I grew up in a shop in Mexico. My father is a mechanic. And when I started, this one, when, this one I started to be in the in industry, I started doing mechanical stuff. My grandfather. Uh, it is a body. Yeah, you ready to? And I like it when I, when I see him start to cut metal, welding, see how ugly comes the cars, and then when you go out of the shop, you see painting and, and it's straight and nice. And like, I start to take an interest, so I almost take both. My father passed to me, my grandfather passed to me. Now I, I got a person, he passed all, all the knowledge I have, and then leave it with him, you know? That's how part I like it. Okay. I need to pull him a little bit high right here, Tony. Mm -hmm. It's too low. And then bring the, bring the striker. I already knew oh, you're, you're gonna, gonna act for it. <laughs> it's Tony is like my son. It's like, he got rules, I got rules. And here I'm his boss, and here I'm the owner. Outside of the door, I'm his uh, father-in-law. But this is one thing me and him is that maybe more respect both because I, I tried to put in a notice. Yeah. You see? It's too low. This was about almost eight years back, eight years and a half. We just come out here for a Thanksgiving dinner from Chicago, and you know he started showing me some pictures, and I was like, you know, when I wanted to be, when I was a kid, this is what I wanted to do. I also wanted to work in cars and all that. He just, hey, you willing to move out here? I'm willing to teach you, and sure enough, we, we took the leap, and here we are. <laughs> Let's go to bring a little bit in. Okay. See, it's a little bit outside right here. Yeah. A little bit outside right here so yeah let's move the hinge when i was younger i, I used to just love cars seeing old school muscle cars the way that you just when you turn them on and it revs up but i think i fell more in love after meeting martin because i was able to actually see some custom work that you know he had done or collision work how he turned something that was crushed like a soda can to bring it back to life it's pretty cool so i think i fell more in love when i moved out here and started working with these guys you got it? Okay. are you guys ready lift no because i need another nice. guy oh all right i'm not <laughs> over there anything working hard anything i can do to help yeah how about a tall guy yeah that that okay. That one, uh, that one helps a lot. Okay, you do the bolts. Okay. It's all good. Go a little bit low. Turbo, come on. Oh, I'm doing it with Turbo. both hands, baby. Turbos. You know what? I don't even have the socket. Oh, here, use this one. Chief, Thank I'm you, sir. <laughs> Test fit? We'll test fit. Okay. Hold on, hold on. All right. Yeah. You guys, you yeah. close? 
Look good from under here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. what I need. Work your magic, baby. Okay. There's lots more to come from the brand new muscle car shop in Tulsa. We'll delve into the second generation of the Bronco, and the bodywork crew continues to fine tune the body on this first generation 4x4. Brand new muscle car classic Bronco is brought to you by Clamp Pipe, the clamp making tool. Silver Sport Transmission, overdrive transmission kits everyone loves, delivered with pride. And by Exalta Coating Systems, we paint winners. Welcome back to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where nearly a half million people live and work. And I bet none work harder than the guys in the brand new muscle car restoration shop, where there's always something new coming through the door. This is a really interesting project. This is a 1969 numbers matching 428 Cobra Jet Mach 1. This is a brand new Mustang with 600 miles on it. The customer is having us take these two cars both apart. When we get done, it's gonna look like this on the outside and it's gonna have all the internals from this car right here. It's gonna have the interior, the drivetrain, the electronics, the wiring, everything possible was his order. So we're gonna take these and build the ultimate combination hybrid car. It's gonna be amazing, it'll be a magazine car for sure. What hurts cannibalizing the old Cobra Jet, the new car, scrap it. Personally, I wouldn't take apart a numbers matching car like this, but it's the customer's car, the customer's money. He insisted on doing it. So at our shop, you get what you want. It's your car, your money. We're happy to do it. It's kind of exciting because it is something different. I mean, I don't know if it's been done before. It probably has, but it hasn't been done very often. So it's going to be something cool, something neat, something new. I mean, who doesn't want the comforts of a new car in an old car? I mean, that's kind of what we do with the resto mods already, but this is going one step further. This, wait, you, you see this gap in here? Yeah. It looks the same on the other side? Yeah, that's real close. Yeah? Yeah. So I remember being a kid and seeing how they used to talk even back then about a 1966 Bronco. So, to be in 2019 and say we're building a 1966 Bronco is something that I never would have ever imagined one because the car was built way before me. Oh yeah, this is tighter. So it's tight, right? Yeah. Yeah. And two, it's a classic because when you're seeing the truck or any other type of good muscle car on the street, it, it turns some heads. And then you can move it that way? This, one is. So this is gonna be a all around type weather Bronco. No windows, no nothing, huge, big, mean tires. I mean, it's gonna be one of a kind Bronco, you know? You could take it out in the street in the city if you wanted to around downtown, or you could just go off-roading. So whatever, whatever you decide, however the coin flips that day. Try to open this one, a little bit, and close the other. Okay. Yeah, look. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty open. Yeah. Probably not enough. Oh, what do you think? Looks okay right there. Let's try to do this one in. Look at this. Oh, yeah. I don't like it, dude. It's like it dropped. Yeah, like it right here, the fender is too, too long. It's going in, right? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. It is already in? Yep. All of them? So, it's only take that one in the front. Do that one too? Yeah, try this one too. Right here in the back is okay. But it's still right there. Let's talk to with David and see if he, he can order another fender and see what, what you let me to do. 
Et Fena, Denis Sergei. Still to come, every brand new muscle car build is made up of thousands and thousands of parts. We'll find out where the crew gets some of them and who's in charge of keeping all of them organized. What the heck is that? Kind of. Learn more about the Ford Bronco story in Todd Zerker's new book. Get your copy of Ford Bronco, a history of Ford's legendary 4x4 at cartechbooks.com and at popular retailers in-store and online. Ford's first generation Bronco was built from 1966 to 1977. It was very popular, but after about five years in production, it started to show some of his age, and so Ford, as a direct result of new vehicles coming on to compete with the Bronco, decided to design a second generation Bronco. That was called Project Shorthorn and actually commenced in 1971 and 1972. The, the second generation, unfortunately, didn't make it into production until 1978. There was a six-year gap there because of the oil embargo, the very poor economy, and tough times of Ford. So that second generation was delayed. It was based off of the existing F-Series chassis. So it offered a lot more interior room. It offered air conditioning. They added double shocks to the front end, which helped with some of the undesirable characteristics of the coil spring front end. They changed some of the suspension geometry so it handled better. It was just a larger, more capable vehicle. It had more room, and with air conditioning and so on, it became a more pleasant vehicle to drive for longer distances. It really became more of the SUV that we think of today. It was much more comfortable. In 1979 was the highest year of Bronco production ever when they sold over 100,000 Broncos. People would use it more for a daily driver. You saw a lot more late of those on the road when they came out, and the sales bore that out. The last year of the Bronco in 1977, for the first generation, they sold about 14,000 trucks. In 1979 was the highest year of Bronco production ever when they sold over 100,000 Broncos. In an era where every vehicle seemed to be getting smaller, the second generation Bronco actually got bigger. In this week's Bronco Corral, we get a close-up look at Ford's first grown-up Bronco. This uh, 78 Ford Bronco, it's the second generation, and there was only 78 and 79 of, of this model. Bought it about five years ago, and then spent about three years working on it. We originally thought we were just going to do a little work to it, get it up and running, have fun with it. But we started taking it apart, and the next thing we know, we ended up with this. It was pretty much a basket case. I knew it had quite a bit of rust, but I didn't have any idea how bad it was until I got into it. Many different parts and pieces, new quarters, different doors, different fenders. The engine's been totally went through, new TCI transmission, new gears front and rear. So every bolt from one end to the other has been touched. The whole purpose of this is something for me and my son to work on. In fact, the decision-making process was he wanted something loud and side pipes and, and all that, and 78 was the last year of no Cadillac converters. 79, same body style, but I couldn't run the, the headers and the side pipes and all that, so that's how we come up with this. The color is a little bit different. I always liked the baby blue or powder blue from that era, but we also wanted a little bit more blue to it, so I just flipped through a PPG book and come up with a color we were willing to take a risk on. I kind of grew up with them being everywhere. I've been to a lot of shows, I've been to this event a couple years in a row, and I don't see a lot of them in, in this condition. I really didn't know what we were creating at the time, so we've been real happy with it. Today, robots and computers are integral in every part of the automotive manufacturing process. 50 years ago, cars were built by hand on fast-moving assembly lines. To boot, car companies often made the same model in several different plants. That led to inconsistencies even when the vehicles were brand new. Tolerances back then were way bigger than they are now. Gaps between panels could be as big as half an inch. And believe it or not, those fitment issues from the old days still affect the industry today. Aftermarket manufacturers don't always have the original dies at their disposal. Instead, they find vintage vehicles to measure and use as templates. As a result, modern pieces are only as accurate as their counterparts from back in the 1960s. When we build a car, we buy a lot of parts. The big parts are obviously sheet metal parts, hood, doors, window frame, tailgate, those sort of things. 
No different on the Bronco build. When we do those parts, the guys that I call, like Steve from Raybuck, they find the parts, they source the parts, I buy the parts. Steve, tell me a little bit about Raybuck and everything you do, not just Bronco, but everything else. Yeah, we source parts for all kinds of cars. We go from the 40s all the way up through late model stuff uh, into the 2000s. It's all over the place. So if you're doing a first series, you know, Chevy pickup, if you're doing Camaros like the Yanko, yep. uh, if you're doing Broncos, if you're working on your Silverado in your house, we take care of all of that. Okay. We get into weather stripping, glass, fuel tanks, flooring. It's all over the board. We try to be like the one source for if you're working on any vehicle at your house. If you're doing body work, there's a good chance we have the panels that you need and the other parts are associated with it to fix your vehicle. So we spend a lot of time sourcing the source so we go to the people who actually make these parts, import them into the U.S., or if they're made in the U.S., find them. Right. We do a lot of fitment testing. We test a lot of the products that we sell prior to selling them to make sure that your alignment's going to be right. You put the hood on, you're going to get the right gaps. You're going to get the right measurements in the cow areas. I mean, we've built cars, too. Like, right. we know when you build a car, stuff's going to need to be tweaked. I mean, from the factory, it never was correct back in the day. But we try to get it as close as possible so that when you guys do your job, it makes it a little bit easier. Up next, this Bronco is like an enormous jigsaw puzzle. And just keeping the pieces organized is an art form in and of itself. Plus, Martin and Tony run into a bit of a bodywork barrier. Stay tuned. Brand new muscle car classic Bronco is brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices, every day on auto parts and accessories. R3 Performance Products, setting a new standard for muscle car and resto mod builds around the world. And by Scoggin Dickey Parts Center, your source for custom built street to strip power. Welcome back to Tulsa. The crew here are truly artists when it comes to building classic cars from scratch, but these artists can't do a thing if they don't have the right tools and materials. And that's where David Miller comes in. You see, every one of these brand new muscle car projects consists of about 10,000 individual parts. And of course, it takes one lucky person to keep track of all of them. I do the parts here at the build shop, but I also do the parts at the resto shop. And believe me, with 12 builds, 24 restorations, I'm a very busy parts guy. Parts, 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 parts. Tom Bronco, Tom Bronco, Tom Bronco. Okay. Trash. Those big packs of microfibers, the multicolored, the green, red, and yellow, blue pack of uh, paint wipes. Trash. Yeah. There you go, sir. Cool. All right. Man. See you, man. Where are you? Extra plastic rivets. Those work for putting the two halves of the cover together? Yeah, mine. I'll take it to him. Uh, okay. And then hood bumps, right? Hood bumps. I would not have gotten rid of the hood bumps. No. no. Oh, my. 10,000 piece jigsaw puzzle. Lord. I put a Ginkgo license plate on it? <laughs> oh, brother. Darn. It's a crazy amount of parts. I love it, but it's just a challenge. It's like Christmas. Whenever a box comes in, parts, parts, and it's like Christmas every time. You can't wait to open it. What's in here? What's in here? Parts, parts, parts. <sighs> yes. <laughs> Tried to get away. All right. Yeah, all right. Oh, you are here. Cool. How's it look? Good. Fine by Friday. Okay, Friday. Hey, I need you a little bit. For... Yeah? Yes. I gotta what are you little... yawning for? You act like you've been working? Mm -hmm. You ain't been working? You over to... oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> what <are> you <laughs> No. <laughs> I, I, I tried to, hey, I tried to come in and not yell at him. Oh. The department guy, so I tried to like. Oh. Is there a problem? See, the, see, see this guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Crap. Okay, what's up? I got an issue with this fender. I put the hood. If you see, yeah, he missed a chunk right here. <laughs> it is it's the, yeah, it goes yeah. like that. Okay. This curve. And you can tell right here. Look, I'm in this size. Here to here, you got the problem right there. 
the fender is like too low right here in this area. Yeah, yeah. The big one is almost even right there, but right here is like. Yeah, based on time, we'll have to weld it. We'll have to weld on a rod or something, grind it down, clean it up, you know? Because if we order another one, I bet you it'll be a week. We don't have a week. Maybe take it off and beat it? Or no? No. No, you have to, you have to add to it? No, because it's a it double, raise. it is double, double. Whoa. Oh, is it? Okay, inside, outside? Yeah, look. Okay, double walled? Yeah. Okay. This, when I tried to tell you, it just needs time. It's too much time? To cut it, welding, and it's, this is up to you. Okay. Yeah, I think we're gonna, I think if it takes four, five, six hours, we still have to do it. Nowhere you can run and get a new fender, unfortunately. Okay, work your magic. Well, there's still plenty more to do on the body, and next week, the crew works hard to make this Bronco look better than it did when it was new. And we'll get our first close-up look at the muscle behind this brand new muscle car resto mod. See you next time. Viva Martin. Who? Viva. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Diva. Diva.